Welcome to Flipped Classroom. Today's lesson will focus on part one of Between the World and Me by ta Coates. Please take a moment to go to this YouTube page to listen to Richard Wright's poem, Between the World and Me, and try to identify some of the connections between the poem and why ta Coates may have selected that for the title of his book. You'll notice from the beginning that it is written in the format of a letter to his son. But I want you to think about who is the real audience? Is it only his son? Also pay attention to the repetition of the phrase, my body. And think about why that is such a focus for ta Coates. As you read through, the first claim you will notice that the author makes is that white America's progress, or rather the progress of those Americans who believe they are white, was built on looting and violence. It's a very interesting claim he makes, especially, he says, Americans who believe that they are white. If, he, if America is synonymous with the success of corporations like McDonald's and Walt Disney and Apple, what the author is saying is the only reason those companies are successful is because of the looting and violence. So who would be the people that are victims of violence in this looting? As you read through, you'll notice he's pointing out people of color. So his claim is that people of color, whether they're Native Americans, African Americans, going all the way back to slavery of the Africans, that it was the violence and looting against them that has made our nation so successful. And remember, this is his claim. You don't need to agree with his claim, but look at the evidence and see if you feel that it supports his claim. The second claim he makes is that Americans believe in the reality of race as a defined, indubitable feature of the natural world. Racism is what he describes as the need to ascribe bone deep features to people and then humiliate, reduce, and destroy them, which inevitably follows from this unalterable condition. I want you to focus on the word need. He says that racism is a need to humiliate, reduce, and destroy people that have bone deep features. He says we can't change that. On page eight, he makes another claim. But this banality of violence can never excuse America because America makes no claim to be banal. America believes itself to be exceptional. I propose subjecting our country to an exceptional moral standards. So what does Coates want to happen in the United States? He's basically saying, look, the United States goes out there in the media, goes around the world saying, we are the best country. We are the greatest country. He's saying, if we are going to say we are so great, if we are that shining city upon a hill, then we better have high moral standards. We better not be treating people as second-class citizens. We better not discriminate against. We better not hold people down because of, of their color, of their sexuality, of their religion, of their economic status. He wants the United States to be held to a very high standard because we claim to be the superior country. So think about that. Do you agree with that concept? On page 10, you'll see that ta Coates begins listing off some names. Tamir Rice, Marlene Pinnock, John Crawford, Renisha McBride, Eric Gardner. On page 10, he says, but of all our phrasing, race relations, race chasms, racial justice, racial profiling, white privilege, even white supremacy, serves to obstruct the racism is a visceral experience that dislodges brains, blocks airways, rips muscles, extracts organs, cracks bones, and breaks teeth. You must never look away, he says. And I've taken pictures from the incidents that he describes. And he doesn't want us to sugarcoat it by saying, well, it's racial injustice. Yes, that is a strong term, but not as strong as thinking about what racial injustice means. Breaking someone's teeth, blocking their airways, 
ripping their muscles. He uses this strong language to drive home the point of how cruel and unjust this really is. But I want you to look deeper. Who is Coates blaming? Is he blaming police? Is he blaming people? Is he blaming people, as he calls them, who perceive themselves to be white? Is he making too broad of strokes? Is he labeling all white people, all police officers? Is he creating an unnecessary fear? And does this type of statement cause a divide in race relations? Also, do you see any hope in his statement or is it hopeless? Does Coates make it sound like this is the trajectory Americans are on and there's no turning back? Is there any positive hope in this statement or is it a grim view of living life in the United States as a person of color and he gives no path out? These are questions I want you to think about when you're analyzing his when you're analyzing his reading. On page 10, he also says, I failed. I was sad for the host. I was sad for all those families. I was sad for my country. But above all in that moment, I was sad for you. And he's speaking about his son. He takes it as a personal failure. There's a tragic irony in the reading on page 10. Because he talks about the famous photo of hope. And here it is on the screen. When Tanasi Coates wrote this book, this young African American boy, adopted by two white mothers, was alive. And as anybody would assume, was thriving as an adopted child. But we know now that that boy died at the hands of his adopted mothers who intentionally drove off a California cliff in 2018 with his six adopted siblings inside a minivan. So when Coates is writing this, he's looking at this boy in this famous photo hugging a police officer. Ironically, years later, we find out that he dies at the hands of two white women who proclaimed to be helping African-American children, but took it within themselves to murder them by driving them off a cliff in a murder-suicide. Think about the irony of that, which of course Coates did not know would happen. On page 11, he talks about the dream. Most of us refer to it as the American dream, but he does not call it the American dream. And he says, I have wanted to escape into the dream, to fold my country over my head like a blanket. But this has never been an option because the dream rests on our backs, our meaning black Americans. He refers to driveways and cookouts and block associations, things that he associates with the dream, but are also commonly associated with people of a specific economic status and white people. So look at his concept of the dream. Think about why he wants to fold it over his head like a blanket. At the end, he talks about the death of Michael Brown. He writes, I did not tell you that it would be okay because I've never believed it would be okay. He's speaking to his son who is crying after hearing that the cops would not be charged, the cop in Michael Brown's death would not be charged. And this is what he writes to his son. What I told you is what your grandparents tried to tell me, that this is your country, that this is your world, that this is your body, and you must find some way to live within it all. So I want you to ask yourself, why doesn't he want to comfort his son? And does this message give his son any hope to move forward? And what do you think of Coates' parenting philosophy? to instead of comforting him, telling his son, you must find a way to live within it all. There are many initial reactions students have. Some read this with anger, some with embarrassment. Some even feel insulted that they are being targeted. Some are in disbelief. Some want to fight back because they agree with what they've said. And some are motivated to change society. One of the common 
responses I've heard through the semesters that I've taught this is students who tell me, I don't own slaves, so why should I be made to feel guilty? No one in my family has owned slaves. No one in my family has been has taken land from Native Americans. No one in my family has sent Japanese people to internment camps. Why in 2019 should I be made to feel guilty about what has happened decades ago? And that is a common reaction. So take some time to self-reflect on how did reading this section by ta Coates feel and express that in your class discussions on Canvas as well as your upcoming essays. Thank you for joining me today in Flipped Classroom.